Hi, I am Todd Richards. I'm a professional snowboarder. And I am here to welcome you to my Park and Pipe Basics Volume 1. I've been snowboarding for probably 15 years or so, a long time. So hopefully I'm going to be able to pass on some of the things that I've learned to you guys. You know, I've gone through all the hard stuff to make it easier for you guys. We're going to be covering everything from first runs in the half pipe to going to hit tabletops, adding grabs, hitting rails, picking lines to the park. Pretty much everything that you need to know to get you started in the park and the pipe. So, as I catch my breath here, let's get on with this. Alright, I know you guys are dying to get into the whole park and pipe area, but the first thing we're going to do is just kind of go over some tips of like etiquette and safety that will probably make your experience in the park and pipe areas a lot more pleasurable. And to help out with that, I've got my man, Billy Anderson, right hand man for many, many years, and we're just going to go through a few things, a lot of it's common sense. You know, he's goofy foot, I'm regular foot. He's gonna give you some different angles on things. He's got tricks I can't do, you know, things that normal people can't do. And uh, we're gonna keep you, we're gonna keep you in the right spot so you don't look like a kook. We're gonna make right. you, make you legit. So here we go. Action. All right, first thing we're gonna cover is just a little basic park etiquette. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what we're gonna go over right now is some key safety points for being in the park and around the pipe area. So the first thing we're gonna cover, the first, and I would say almost the most important safety issue is being aware of your danger zones in the park. Uh, danger zone number one, landings. Extremely blind area when people are coming up the jumps, they don't know what's down there. They don't know if you're down there, if there's 10 people down there, whatever. So, danger zone number one, landings of, the, landings of the jumps. Danger zone number two is, you know, probably hanging out on the takeoffs of the jumps. Bad area, there's people flying down at you, you know, as fast as they can possibly go to clear this thing, and you don't wanna get blindsided by some large style of man who's just gonna flatten you. Bad news, bad news, bad news. These are really high speed areas, so you're really gonna wanna be aware That's in those right. zones. Okay, number two. Uh, your surroundings, your snow conditions, the speed that you need for jumps. Uh, if it's early morning and it's springtime like it is today, chances are that the snow is rock hard and you don't want to just be barreling into some jump, you know, and all of a sudden you figured out that you're going 10 times faster than you need to be going and you land in the parking lot. You really got to be aware of that as the day goes on too, because in the morning it's going to be a lot harder and faster. And as the afternoon goes on, the snow is going to get a little bit slower. So. Right. Be aware. Number three, I would say, is try not to get in over your head. You know, you've got a lot of these jumps, you need to do baby steps. You can't just roll into like a 50 foot table uh, before like really checking it out, really gauging your speed and, and knowing what you're getting into. When you're stopping in the park, when you know, and you want to check out your bros or whatever, you know, whatever it is you call them, pull off to the side. Make sure that you're not stopping in a blind area. Um, you know, a lot of times you see in parks, kids will come off the jump and everyone's, you know, you might be filming your friends, you might be taking a picture. Don't just stop right where people are going to be flying. So try not to stop at the landings of the jumps. Number five, and lastly, I would say are crashes. You know, be aware of your crashing. If you crash in the landing, pull off to the side. Even if your goggles and your gloves and your underwear and your pants and everything else is on <coughs> below the jump, Pull off to the side, let someone know that's above the jump that you've just crashed, your stuff's over there, and you wanna go get it. So someone can, you know, say, hey, hold up a second, I got to, this guy's gotta go get his gloves, or whatever. Let me see, what else? The hand signals, respecting the hand signals that you'll probably be seen thrown around on jumps. That's, these are usually if someone falls, um, or, you know, there's something dangerous at the bottom of one of the jumps. The first one is no. This means the don't hit the jump. And it's, it's an X. Basically, it's an X, you know, X. Another one, if it's all cool after, you know, they cleared out the wreckage or debris, that's the, this one. That's clear. okay, everything's all clear. You know, hit it. 
Also, if you're in the park and someone falls and they fall on the landing, you know, be courteous. Say, hey, are you okay? You know, lend a helping hand because that could be you laying there at some point and it's, it's just good, you know? That's good karma. All right, Bill. Shred it let's covered. Shred it covered, you know? Okay, so let's uh, let's get to the top of the park. And let's get to the park and we'll, we'll roll some of this stuff out. All right. Safety is no accident. Here we are, we're at the park. You guys are chomping at the bit. You want to bag that boss air dude. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna assess the park. We're gonna, you know, roll through it a couple times, check things out, check the size of jumps. You wanna look for any, you know, obstacles that might pose a hazard to you later on during the day. And at this point, you know, you, you've just gotten to the ski area, you know, or you, you just, it's your first time over here in this park area, and you wanna make sure that you've got a line that's gonna be safe for you. You know, you're gonna make sure that you wanna jump the tabletops you wanna jump, because there's so many different kinds of parks now. You got 50 foot tables, you got 10 foot tables, you got rails. So it's really important to take baby steps and pick your line. You know, you wanna pick a line, maybe three obstacles at a time that you wanna get the speed for and get wired. So you can do that by either rolling over them, you can ride off to the side, out of the way, you know, making sure that you're staying off those landings, staying off the, you know, the takeoffs and things, because there's gonna be people whizzing around. Make sure you're in a green zone. Okay, so just kind of cruise through, you know, pick, pick your line, three obstacles at a time, making sure that you got the right speed and everything. And uh, Bill, why don't you demonstrate what it might be like to pick a nice line in the park. All right, we're gonna check it out. Watch how Billy's just, you know, he's taking it easy, just rolling over the jumps, and checking for obstacles that he might not see, looking at landings, looking for things that you might not be aware of, things you wouldn't see, but just, you know, just take it easy. This is for your own good. It's not really to impress anybody. So just, just, you know, roll through, keep it cool. Action. All right, we are back. back. We have just gone through and done a little ride through the park. We we're checking out the tables. And as you notice, we were also kind of gauging our speed. And speed gauging is one of the most important things that you could possibly have going in the park because you're going to want to know how fast to go to clear these jumps because they do vary in size. One way of doing that uh, is something I like to call shadowing or some people call it ghosting. It's basically when you follow someone else who's already hit the jump and cleared it successfully, you're going to just gauge their speed by kind of ghosting. You ghost behind them and you go around the jump as they go over it. Maybe you do that a couple times to kind of get the rhythm down of how fast you need to be going. You know, there's little, little things you can listen for. How fast is your jacket flapping? I mean, just it, seriously, you'll start to get in tune with it and you'll just, you'll feel it. And since this is your first time, Ghost it a couple times with your friend. Billy and I are gonna go ghost it right now. Let's ghost. We ghost. Ooh. The key to ghosting, other than being scary, is uh, just following your friend down to the jump. You just wanna follow him, just, you're just gauging speed. Okay, so that was ghosting. Basically, you're just taking a parallel line to your friend and making sure that you cut out early and watching him, you know, take the right line. All you're doing is getting a feel for the speed. That is it. You're not hitting the jump because if you do, you'll end up playing crisscross crash and that's bad news again. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start jumping. We're gonna start getting this going so you guys can actually put all this stuff together and we can just, uh, you know, go out there and have some fun. All right, Billy looks like he's about ready to jump, so I'm gonna jump you guys right into this thing too we've got what is known as a hip. Now a hip jump, you know, they're basically you're gonna hit it like a corner. And these are really good to learn on because you can see your landing first of all, which is really important. And you can also go as small as you want to as big as you want. What we're doing here is building a foundation for later on. I mean, these are skills that you're gonna use all over the mountain. You're gonna use them in the park, in the pipe, you know, free riding, jumping cliffs, whatever. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about our body movement. Okay, we're coming into the jump. We're gonna have a nice relaxed stance because you know if you're stiff, you're just gonna fly out of this thing and you wanna be able to absorb the transition. 
So we're coming in nice and low. Keep it calm, keep it relaxed. Everything, you've got everything right here. You're looking where you're gonna land. You're watching the tranny. So you're crouching down, you're absorbing the tranny, and when you get to the top, you're gonna ollie and pop a little bit. And then you're gonna stay relaxed, spot the landing, extend into the landing, and get low again. So Bill, let's go hit this thing. With snowboarding, just like any other sport, it's important to know your limits. Make sure that you start small and work your way up, and then you'll have a much better and much safer experience. You're approaching the jump, you're gonna stay relaxed, you're gonna keep your knees bent, you're gonna keep your base flat. Make sure you look where you're going, pop off the lip, you're gonna absorb your legs up into your body. Making sure to stay centered, stay relaxed, keep those arms calm, and constantly spot your landing. See how Billy's just taking it easy here? He's going kind of smaller than me. So what you're doing is taking baby steps. As you get more and more comfortable with jumping, you start to go bigger and bigger. You start to look like a hot shot, you go pro, yada, yada, yada. You get free stomp pads, stickers. You know, it's important. Those are the important things in life, free stickers and stomp pads. So take it slow, and you'll eventually get a lot of useless free product. All right, so now that we're all warmed up with our jumping, we're gonna head right over into rails. One, two, three, four. Now it's time to feel the steel. These are rails. You see them all over the place. You see them in cities, you see them in the park. They come in all different shapes and sizes. We've got kinked rails, we've got downhill rails, we've got rails that go up, we've got rails that look like tabletops. We've got, right here we've got a rainbow rail. And basically what we're gonna do is go through just some basic rail tricks. I mean, you can get as crazy as you want on these things. Today we're gonna take you through the 50-50. Basically what it is, is gonna have the rail right underneath the arch of your foot. So imagine if you drew a straight line down through your leg, it's gonna be right at the arch of your foot. You've got 50% of your board over here, 50% of your board over here. What you're gonna wanna do for 50-50s is you're gonna wanna stay really relaxed. Rails are one of those things that can come up and nip you unless you're keeping your body nice and relaxed. If you approach this rail and you start to feel yourself go, you know, in either direction, one thing with rails is you do not wanna fight it. The more you fight it, the more you're liable to hook an edge and go down, okay? If you start to fall on a rail, make sure you just go off to one side. Try to make it to the snow. And get remember, away from the metal. Get away from the metal. Don't fight it. You're approaching the rail. Keep enough speed. Stay low and relaxed. Uh, you want to be confident. Rails are, can be a mind messer, so half of it's psychological. So now you're on the rail, remembering to stay relaxed and centered. Don't start twisting your shoulders or anything. You want to keep your toes, knees, and shoulders aligned. And just focus on the end of the rail. It's all in the initiation. When you first get on the rail, you're gonna know whether or not you're squared up. Any mistake that you make, once you try to correct it, will be magnified tenfold. You know, it's metal hurts a lot more than snow does, so get away from the metal. If you feel yourself getting squarely, as soon as you get on the rail, just come off early. Don't try to correct on the rail. Bad things will happen. They've happened to me. They're happening to Billy right now. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> he loves rails. Key things with rails is you do not want to fight it. You want to make sure at all times that your body is squared up. As soon as you start turning like this, your board is just going to have a natural tendency to follow you, and that's when you're getting the problems with hooking your edges. <laughs> Billy Anderson taking his 50-50 from the rainbow over here to the slanted rail that goes downhill. Basically the same thing, just gotta be a little bit more aware, it's a little bit more of a blind takeoff. Just hold it a little longer, keep your same balance, keep everything cool, and you'll be fine. One of the major differences between this downhill rail and the rainbow rail we just rode is that you're working with gravity. So that means you're not gonna need as much speed. Another difference is, I mean, you might not be able to see it as well as you could see the rainbow rail. So trust yourself. You can do this. Make sure that you're focusing on the rail. You're thinking about how cool you look when you just came off the end, not like what can go wrong while you're on the rail. 
Being relaxed on the rail is mucho importante. That means very important to all you non-bilinguals out there. So make sure that you are relaxed in the rail. Same as the rainbow, it's just a little different shape here. Making sure that your toes, knees, shoulders are all lined up. We're just doing a 50-50. It's over before you even know it. So you're just going down. Cue action sports montage. Tiger, wrong show. Gnarly montage. Now, back to the video. Some common mistakes that you could run into on this downhill rail are exactly the same as the rainbow rail. You know, if you feel yourself starting to slip off the rail, go with it. Worst case scenario on this rail would be to hop onto it, not be centered, and hook either your toe or heel edge. So if you ever plan on having a family, just, you know, Take it slow, make sure you're centered, go through the mental checklist, and everything will go fine. Action! Okay, we have wrapped up the whole rail section. We've covered the flat bar that kind of went downhill, we did the rainbow, and we've been doing 50-50s over and over and over and over again. 50-50s, once again, are the building blocks to everything you're going to be learning later on. We teased you a little bit with some board slides and some stuff like that, but you know, stick to the 50-50 until it's a no-brainer. <laughs> we have showed you what not to do a few times. Uh, you know, we showed you what happens when you, you hook an edge and things like that. These are the things you want to be careful of. You're going to sure. slip out on your heels too if you don't keep that thing straight on that. I think we got a couple of those too. So. Really keep your eye on the end of the rail, it'll keep you in a straight line. That's right, make sure you keep it underneath there. Keep everything locked in and you'll be fine. Roll right into grabs here. We're gonna up the ante. We're gonna hit some jumps, go a little bit bigger. You know, really start to put this park thing together. Okay, we're back. We're gonna do the indie grab. I always recommend a little stretching before you get out there and really hit the slopes with your grabs. First, we're gonna do the indie grab. Indie grab is grabbing your snowboard on your toe side edge with your trailing arm. It's one of the most simple grabs you can do. Subtle differences can make it one of the most stylish grabs in snowboarding. Now, we're gonna go through the mechanics of this thing. The mechanics of the indie grab. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you're ollieing off the jump, your body's gonna to begin to turn so you're gonna be facing the nose of your board. And at the same time, you're gonna be leaning down and coming up at the same time, bringing that toe edge into your hand. You're basically gonna split the difference. Okay, so you're gonna bring your body down halfway, you're gonna bring your, your legs up halfway, and you're just gonna grab that board on your toe side edge. Now there's a lot of different stuff you can do with this. You can just, you can go as crazy as you want. And uh, Bill, why don't you drop and give me 20, or four, and can you handle four? Four? Four variations four of the indie grab. What do you want to start? Just a normal let's go frontside? nose. Let's go nose bone. Nose bone. This is called the indie frontside nose bone. Now notice his leg, straight, straight leg. Let's arm. Get an, let's get another arm one. Arm in or out? You can go in or out. That's that's tuck knee because you're tucked around the knee. Now Bill, just, you trail. Know, trail. Miss Stinker. 
Stiffy. <laughs> like, Come on. Like that, Come on. <laughs> Pop those out. Sti well, we'll leave the Stiffy to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get stuff. Bill? It's going to get warmed up. You get your board and then we'll go. Hey, get over yourself. Let's go and do this. All right. You're approaching the jump with your base flat. At the same time, you're eyeing the takeoff, anticipating the lip. As you're leaving the lip, allow the jump to project you into the air and reach down to grab your board in one fluid motion. Split the difference by bringing your knees up and reaching down to grab your board with your trailing hand between your bindings. Don't make any exaggerated body movements this time, one fluid motion. You want to keep those shoulders nice and squared up because if you start to get shoulder drift towards your front side or your back side, there's a better chance of you hooking your edge on the landing. When you're coming in for a landing, make sure that you bend your knees, remain relaxed, and absorb the impact. As you get more and more comfortable with this, you can start trying different variations. Billy's doing nose bones here tailbones here and there. Sometimes you'll find that one thing will work better than the other. You know, you maybe maybe tailbones or nose bones will help you do indie airs better. Who knows? It's all personal preference, personal style. Get out there and just do a whole bunch of them to see what works for you. Number one point, split the difference. Make sure that you keep your knees and your body in sync. You want to bring your knees up halfway, bring your body down halfway. One smooth motion. Make sure that you've got your body squared up. When you're going off the jump, you're paying attention to where your takeoff point is and where your landing is. What were your problems, Bill? What did you have? Mistakes at the beginning was uh, going over the nose. Coming up, getting a good grab, but trying to tweak it too hard, going a little crazy. You got to make sure a nice poke, I was going over the front. Split the difference. Got to keep it all tight. Then uh, I was diving, diving into the back seat, trying to compensate, grabbing the front. You're grabbing your feet, you're all over the place, it's not where you want to be. All right, so remember, split the difference, stay nice and relaxed, make sure that you have your body centered. Now, things to avoid, the arm flap. I personally am a great arm flapper, I'm trying to fly away. I have my arms flapping and then I grab Tindy. Now Tindy is the absolute no-no in snowboarding. Tindy is right, this is a Goofy Footers board and this is, Tindy is back here. Not this, good, good. Bad. This is a big. This is a big red zone right bad. here. You, you might want to just color that in red on your board because that's that's a bad area. So, let's wrap it up. Boom. In the air, nice and centered. Stay relaxed. Avoid the tindies and pretty You're much dial. <laughs>
And Billy right here gives us the 86 Rocket Mute, and he can't even get a handle on this one. <laughs> All right, we have just done the mute error. The mute error, remember kids, is this front hand grabbing between your bindings on your toe edge. So, what were the common things that people could possibly do wrong? Going like this, reaching down for your board and not bringing your board up into you. You do not want to give people the butt shot behind you. That's really bad. Another okay. common mistake you don't want to do is to make sure that you rotate too much so your board is heading down fall on. You want to be able to bring it back. If you're pushing it out in front of you, you always want to make sure that you can return your body to the position that it was in so you can get a nice smooth landing. A couple variations, maybe a little Japan move. Yeah, little Japan air. Billy, Billy's you can kind of grab Japan on air. the inside, pull your knee down. Pull your knee down. A little you know, variation. I'm not that flexible. So let's wrap this up, Billy. We got the mute air. We got two in the bag. We're gonna go for tail grabs next. Let's go grab some let's tail. Do tail grab. <laughs> We've uh, gotten two down. Three more to go. Third one, gonna be the tail grab. Grabbing a little tail, Bill. Now you know where you want to grab? You want to grab right here, right on the end of your board, sir. Square it up. This zone right here, this is good. Bad. Opposite side, bad. <laughs> now the tail grab is kind of a little bit different than the indies and the mutes because what we're going to want to do is you're going to bring your back leg up into you a little bit more. If indies and mutes, you're bringing the whole board up, the tail grab to make it easier on yourself, you're just gonna pull your back leg up into your chest. So what you're gonna do is basically just pull your back leg up and extend your front leg a little bit to make it a lot easier on yourself because if you don't, you're gonna be doing one of these. God, I can't even touch my toes. Oh man. A little exercise you're laying on your bed before you're going to bed. You just lay there, you can kind of you grab it. Lay there. Like this. Just kind of lay. Lay around, lay there. It's, make, make sure you do this at home. Don't do this with the skier. You look like you're ridiculous. <laughs> you're gonna look like us. Okay, so Bill, what we wanna do, make sure that you bring your back leg up into you. Make sure you're grabbing right on the end of the board. You're not grabbing tin to your tailfish. And uh, stay relaxed, stay calm, just follow through on everything. Spot I'll show you how this one's done. Show me how it's done. Yes, me how it's done. I just gotta lay here. This. If you get real good, you're just like going through the air going, what yeah. What's up now? Feel the burn. I pulled a hammy. The first thing you're going to notice is that the same motion doesn't really work for tail grabs as worked with the mutes in the indies. You're going to want to pull your back leg up into you a little bit more than your front leg. You're going to make it easy on yourself by pulling that tail up into your hand instead of having to go down to it. This is also going to give you a tendency to be in the back seat a little bit. Just watch out for this one. You're going to need to lean back a little to grab the board. But make sure that you're still nice and centered with your core of your body so you can bring it back and get it back under you for your landing. Things to watch out for with this one, making sure that you keep your hand away from the danger zones. Making sure that you let go in time because if you are leaning back while holding onto that tail, you're just going to wash out or land on your back or do something else that you probably don't want to do. Sometimes with the tail grabs, it helps to kind of push your board off to the side, shift it out a little bit because that way you don't have to totally lean back to grab it. Just pay attention to your body placement. Don't lean back too far and just experiment with this one. Some things work for some people, some things work for other people. Bliggity blam, Billy! We just got done doing the tail grab. Now the tail grab, remember kids, is the one where you're grabbing with your trailing hand right on the end of the tail. We're not going into the zones known as this one. Is this the front of your board? Or what footed are you? Goofy foot, this back here. Is that the tail? This is the tail. Okay, this zone right here on a goofy footer is the tailfish. This zone right here is the tindy. Avoid those at all costs. Good, like a little tip on the second trick tip video. Put things where you want to avoid, like stickers. If you want rail grabs, you can grab those too. Am I biting your video again? Dude, seriously. Okay, Keep it going. so let's get the mechanics of the tail grab one more time. You're coming off this jump. You're bringing your back leg up into you. You're not going down to the board because it's almost physically impossible to reach down there and land your trick. I like to make a little lobster claw with my hand. This is a little lobster claw. Just 
right there on the tail. It's gonna That's snap it. right on it. You're That's doing it. the tail grab. You're doing the tail grab. What you want to make sure that you do not do with the tail grab is hold on to the tail grab when you go to land. You got to make sure that you get your body back to center and land nice and smooth. Okay. So we did the tail grab. We've done indies. We've done mutes. I think the next one we're going to try is the stale fish, Billy. I think I'm going to try that one. Billy's going to do the stale fish. I know Let's go work on it. Let's see what we can do. Stale fish. Stale fish. That's grabbing right here between, it's on your heel edge, trailing hand. You're going to want to push your back leg out to get your hand up. It's kind of like what we did with the tail grab. Except this time, what we're going to be doing is pulling our front knee up into us and straightening out our back leg because you want to bring that board up to you. It's a really, really hard to go for the board on this one. I personally have a huge problem with stale fish. I'm hoping Billy can take up my slack. I, I think my arms are too short or something. What you're going to do, you're going to approach the jump nice and low, nice and relaxed. You're going to be visualizing this thing on the way in. You're going to pop off the lip. You're going to suck your front knee up into you. You're going to extend your back leg. You're going to grab. And at the same time, you're going to be kind of rotating your body so it's almost facing down where you're going to land. It makes it a lot easier to do this trick. If you're really crazy, you're going to push that leg out. Ah, oh, my hammy. <laughs> make the board come to you. Do not go to your board on this one. It'll throw you all off balance and make things horrible, at least for me. So, Bill, let's get this thing. You go and do, you're really going to make me do this, Chelsea. We're going to we're going to work on it. This is the ugliest. I mean, I seriously can't. Here we go. Let's do it. With the stale fish, the thing that you're going to notice here watching Robbie and Billy is how they really pull their front leg up into them and simultaneously bone their back leg out at the same time. This makes it really easy for that board to get up into your hand. If you watch me, I totally disregard everything I'm saying right here and just do some crazy donkey kick, stale fish, total body extension, uh, just that. But watch those guys. Their lower body rotates a little bit so it's almost facing down the hill to get that board up into their hand. Make sure you bring that board back to face the landing or else you're just going to hook your toe edge and just go tumbling down the hill and lose your goggles. Another thing with this one, don't lean back just like with the tail grab. Make sure that you keep your body nice and centered. Now that everyone knows about my stale fish inadequacies, Let's wrap this up. Okay, stale fish. I couldn't do it. Billy did it. You know, we're almost there. We've got like one more move to go. Thank goodness that my man Robbie Sell and my man Billy Anderson can do a stale fish. I'm gonna say what I did wrong with my stale fish and then you can give me, maybe give me some pointers. I grabbed right here. That's the, the tail fish. It's the no-no zone between the tail grab and the stale fish. My hand went instinctively right there. My body flapping, uh, you know, fish out of water. I think what I needed to do, which I didn't do, was rotate my lower body. You need that good 45 to 90 degrees off the bat to get your body squared up so you can grab, suck up and grab that thing. Hmm. Yeah, I probably do need to get that going. Okay, so, stale fish. I have two short of arms, I can't do them. Robbie Sell <laughs> and Billy Anderson can do stale fish. So what you wanna do, I can, can, I can visualize this thing, I just can't pull this thing off. Go up to the jump, stay low, pop. You're gonna wanna turn your lower body and bring that board up into your hand by sucking your front and back knee up into your chest. You're gonna wanna extend, go, hey, how's it going? Point the guys in the deck, let go, land, and right away smooth. Would you say that's about, that, it's in a nutshell, selfish in a nutshell? Pretty much. For an old man, uh, at least you got, you, got, you got four out of five. Even my arms are too short. That trick's been around for like as long as snowboarding has been around. I never did it. I never. I mean, I, I think didn't you, need you, it. That was the era of you. I didn't need it. You need to start working on that. I prefer to do my stale fish in a switch nature, uh, as in this uh, switch front side seven stale fish. Welcome to Method Grabs Volume One with me, Billy Anderson. This is going to be your trick, your signature trick. It's the one that defines all your style. It starts with the likes of Jamie Lynn, Chris Roach, and Sean Palmer. This is, this is gonna be the trick that you wanna learn. I don't know what happened to TR, so I think we're just gonna dive in without him. We're gonna start with your basic position like we were standing before. Knees bent, and you're gonna approach the lip, and you're gonna get, you're looking at the lip, ready to set it up. Whoa, 
Easy, Tigger. What are you doing? Where have you been? I just started the method one. I was, you know, Billy, I was looking forward to kind of... Give you an inch, take a mile, give you a rope, if you're a cowboy. Seriously, we're having serious difficulties here with uh, defining who actually is running the show here. Well, I got, I already did. Let's we're talking about it. method air. We got it. The defining point of everyone's style. So with the method air, you're going to be approaching the jump. This is another one of those tricks where you need to bring the board up to you. It's make it a lot better and you can really style it out. Coming at the jump, stay and relax. Split the difference. Bring your front knee up and at the same time, you're going to be crossing your back knee out in front of you. You're going to be doing a twist. You're going to be twisting your waist so you're facing the landing. I like personally like to grab in front of the binding and really push out with your back leg to get that thing across. That's right. Now this move can be done in the half pipe, can be done off straight jumps. Personally, I like to do this jump everywhere. You know, this, this is my deal. So Bill. Let's get out of here. I'm going to go do some methods and you, uh, I'll grab your gloves, you get out of here. You come with me because I'm sick of you. All right, so back to my show anyways, the method. Uh, I think we pretty much took care of it, so I'm gonna catch up with Todd. We're gonna do some method. Important thing to remember about method airs is they're kind of a two-part trick. You're gonna push your back leg out while at the same time throwing that other hand over your front shoulder. So as soon as you get that board up into your hand, you're gonna wanna start crossing it up. This is also great for style and for counterbalance. Popping off the jump, you're grabbing with your front hand behind your heel. At the same time as you get your hand on your board, you're gonna begin to push your back leg out and cross that other hand over the hand that you're grabbing with. It might seem kind of awkward at first, but you know, just tweak it little by little. You don't have to get all extreme sport with it at first do little ones here and then start pushing it further and further. Make sure that you bring it back under you. You know, don't get all caught up in the moment about how rad you probably look in the air and forget to bring it back because you'll blow yourself out. Make sure you spot your landing and just keep practicing. This is one of those grabs that the more you do it, the more comfortable you get and the more you can style it out. It's fun, it's easy, but man, does it ever look good in pictures. Wait until your mom shoots pictures of you doing this grab. You are going to be like, that's me? And your mom's gonna go, yeah, that's you. And you're gonna be like, wow, I'm almost there. Okay, so we just got done doing methods. Mine kind of looked a lot like that, and I was kind of like, uh, I was kind of like this. Billy was more like, uh, I can barely even cross it up. So, anyway, method errors. We just did them. Billy tried to take over the video. They're done. I'd like to remind you that I can replace you with a monkey <laughs> in any given minute. Sorry about that. So, method errors. Common mistakes. Mistakes that people might have with this trick is maybe leaning too far forward, not bringing the board up to you enough, getting too far over the nose, which when you're over the jump will be magnified 10 times and you'll be doing the flying rag doll right in the landing parts everywhere. Bad news. Another common, common thing that you might have problems with is not crossing your board up enough. Not bringing it across your waist like this. You might end up doing one of these, which we refer to as the sole arch, the 86 method, or the donkey kick. Those are no-nos. I don't I mean, want to be you, doing that. You could do them, but you mean you could. All right, so there's that. So what did we cover today, Billy? We went India. In the air. We did a mute air. Got the mute. We did a tail grab. Got the tail grab. You did a stale fish. Yeah. And you, then... you know everything about snowboarding, but you don't know the stale, but we'll talk about that later. Whatever. Stale. I told you, monkey. Five minutes. <laughs> then we have the method. Wrapped it up with the method. The most stylish trick in snowboarding. Now, let's see if we can bring all this stuff over in the half pipe. All right. We got a lot more to cover here. We're just getting started. We're getting started. So, Bill? I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun? I'm going to go take a rest. I told you. Stop it. All right, we're done. Let's go to the guy.
are. We are in the half pipe. This is it. This is what we've been working for. The half pipe has been my home, away from home, for about the last 12 to 15 years. I've used these walls for fame and glory, or whatever you want to call it. We are going to take everything that you've learned over there in the park and we're going to apply it in here. The half pipe's a little bit different territory now. We're really going to have to use our edges. It really requires the use of speed in order to maintain your line and, and be creative. We're going to cover, you know, finding your line in the half pipe. Very important, just like in the park. We're going to cover dropping in. We're going to cover riding the transitions, keeping speed, linking tricks. We're going to go through doing little airs. We're going to then, we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to start grabbing airs. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited here. I'm gonna run back up the half pipe. I am just amped to ride this. It's really sunny. I'm just gonna run up this thing. I'm just gonna run, you know, run. I don't even hike, I run. There's a couple different ways to drop in. I'm gonna go over one of them with you right now. The first way is to find a smaller section of the tranny. You notice at the top of the half pipe, it gets small and then gets bigger as it goes down. You're gonna use one of these smaller transition pieces to roll in and begin to pick your line. Dropping into the pipe is extremely important because later on, when you're doing errors and stuff, it's gonna be the thing that just starts you with the right amount of speed and it's gonna set you up for everything else. The most common and easy way to roll into the pipe for myself and for a lot of other people is using your toe edge first. You can control it a lot more, you can watch where you're going. It's, it's just a lot easier. You have to kind of be aggressive on this one because you, it's generating speed. Stand up, get going, get nice and relaxed, come over the top of the hump and kind of thrust your weight down, making sure that everything is all squared up. You're looking where you're going, your shoulders are following, your hips are following your shoulders. Billy's about to demonstrate for us right here this roll in. Bill? Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. When you get to the lip, you are going to want to unweight your front foot and begin to lean forward, thrusting your weight down the transition. This is a similar action to what you would do on a skateboard ramp with dropping in. You're basically using your body weight to create speed and propel you across the flat bottom. This is the more advanced drop in. This is how you're probably gonna do it once you get the whole thing dialed, once you're putting it all together. Basically what we have here is we're riding on top of the deck and we're gonna use the speed that we have going downhill to roll in the steeper section and really pump out of the tranny. This is not a cliff, this is not a jump. The goal is not to land in the middle of the half pipe. We're gonna come along and gently suck it up and use the tranny to push us out. Billy's gonna do one heel side, I'm gonna do one toe side. Go. That's heel side, this is toe side. With this drop in, there's going to be a lot more speed involved. You're really going to feel it on your uphill edge, so pay attention. Okay, this is called the transition. This is the portion of the half pipe that is going to generate your speed. It's going to make you pop up into the air. It is your friend. Embrace the tranny. This is it. This is, this is the whole thing that's going to create your aerial antics. So, when you're riding a transition, Basically, it's kind of like riding, it's like being on a swing. You need to swing your weight up when you're coming up the tranny. You know, you want to get low in the bottom and extend and push your weight up the tranny. You're going to come back down, you're going to shift your weight and just look. We're not turning or anything, we're just going you know, to look backwards and you're going to ride up the opposite tranny backwards. And then we're just going to do what's known as a falling leaf. You're just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're just going to feel out what the flat bottom's like, what the transition's like, and just really work on you know, efficiently pumping a half pipe. Very, very important. That's basically, you know, bottom line, you need speed to ride a half pipe. Pay attention to the way my body is exaggerating these movements. As I go up the transition, I throw my arms up. As I come down, I pump down and throw my arms through the flat bottom. What I'm doing here is exaggerating my movements just so you guys get an idea of what it's like to actually use your entire body to gain momentum and go through the half pipe. This exercise is great to teach yourself edge awareness in the half pipe. Once you get comfortable using the falling leaf pattern with your heel edge, start on your toes. It's basically the same thing, keeping that pressure on your uphill edge and just using your body momentum to pump back and forth. As you become more efficient at this pumping technique, your body movements are going to become less exaggerated and just more fluid. 
this may seem like a really boring thing to do to you, but seriously, you see some of these kids come into the pipe and they don't know how to keep their speed and they're flailing all over the place and they can't keep a line to save their lives. Practice this, you know, two, three, four times. It's really going to pay off. When you're, you know, getting your pump down so that you can blast big airs, this, this is where things really come in to play. So, let's go over this one more time. Remember, when you're on your uphill edge, which in this case would be my heel edge, I'm staying low, you know, nice and relaxed, keeping, making sure your knees are relaxed. You know, you're coming down from this one and you're looking with your head. And as soon as you start to go up the tranny, your arms are gonna follow and that in turn will turn your hips. So it's like a one, two, three movement. You come across the trans, you come across a flat bottom out of your first transition, you look with your head, your arms follow and then your hips follow that. So you go up, exaggerate it, throw your arms up, exaggerate this. And then when you're coming down, use that weight, you know, use the momentum of your arms to throw your body weight down the tranny. So bring those back down, your head comes around, your arms go this way, brings your hips, sets you up for the next wall. Make sure that you keep your pressure on your uphill edge because, you know, you start to wobble, you get that, you know, start coming around this way, you're gonna catch your toe edge. If you're doing faking the other way, you're gonna catch your heel edge. So remember, just keep the nice feathering on your uphill edge and you will be fine. So basically what this is doing is it's gonna set us up for our next you know, little piece here, which is doing little kick turns in the wall. And that in turn is gonna set us up for doing air. So remember, practice this a couple times. It's a great warm up, gets your knees limber, gets your body you know, all ready for whatever you've got going on for the rest of your day. And you just go with it. And you'll be, you'll be the kid who's going way bigger than your friends later on. Believe me. Hey, believe me. Okay, so we've gone through the whole going down the pipe like the falling leaf deal. That's, you got that pretty wired. We're all set with that. We're keeping our speed. We're, you know, nice and smooth coming down. Now we're gonna start linking these things together. We're gonna start switching our edges. We're gonna go up one wall on our heel edge. Say you come up this wall on your heel edge. We're gonna transfer our weight so we, then we come down on our toe edge. And basically what this is doing is just, you know, giving you the fundamentals for right before you start hopping little airs. First you start doing like little kick turns, like little unweighty kick turns just to get going the other direction. You get comfortable with those, then you start moving up, doing little backside ollies, little frontside ollies to start pushing in and you know going in the other direction. These are building blocks again for creating a line down the pipe, and uh, airs are next. With kick turns, it's going to be important that you learn that you're going up on one edge and coming down on the opposite edge. When you're using your backside wall, you're going to be going up on your heel edge and coming down on your toe edge. And the opposite for your front side wall, going up on your toe edge and coming down on your heel edge. You want to perform these kick turns right below the lip. Make sure you're just feeling out how your edge grabs in the snow and just, just feel out the transition. You know, we're not doing airs yet, this is basically just to get a feel for how your edges go in and how to transfer weight from edge to edge. After the kick turns, we are going to do little baby ollies. It's the same as a kick turn except now you're popping your entire board off the wall. The mechanics are very similar to ollieing off the hip that we did earlier. You're going to go up the wall, and as soon as you leave the lip, you're going to pop and pull your knees up into you, staying nice and compressed. Lean with your front shoulder, look with your head, and your body will follow. Very, very subtle movements. You can even exaggerate this if you're having trouble by going up the wall and pointing to where you want to go, and your body will follow. The tricky part about riding the half pipe is getting used to the edge transfers, going from heel edge to toe edge and you know back and forth. Just keep them under the coping, don't go over the coping yet, just getting used to the wall, getting used to the weight transfer and using your edges. Okay, here we go. We're really going to get airborne now. We've just come through and we've done a bunch of those little kick turns, we've done the little hop turns. Now we're going to use the speed that we've generated. Coming across the bottom, we're going to use that pump to its maximum and pop out of the pipe. Do little front side ollies. If you practice this on hips, you can see where you're gonna land. Just make sure, you know, you're popping off the top, getting enough air, you can see that you're gonna clear and land back in. This is the first air you're gonna do, and then we're gonna work on grabs right after that. You're approaching the wall. Keeping your knees bent, throw your weight up the transition. Keep an eye on the lip and prepare to unweight and pop into the air. This is all done in one motion. Now that you're airborne, pull your knees up into you and spot the landing. Extend your legs to meet the transition, land and pump across the flat bottom. 
Make sure you try these one at a time. Try some on your front side wall, then try some on your back side wall. Get them wired and then start linking them together. A key thing to remember as soon as you're airborne is to make sure that your board, knees, shoulders, and head are all in line. This will keep you nice and balanced and it will be that much easier for you just to reach down and grab your board once you're airborne. Action! Alright! Indies, mutes, tails, stales, methods. The grab is basically the cherry on top of the sundae here. You know, we want to make sure that we've got a really good line in the half pipe first. You know, making sure we're back in, generating speed the proper way. You're going up the wall, you're nice and relaxed. You're going to use your body to kind of flow you through that transition and pop you out the top. The grab is an afterthought. Your primary thought is to make it back into the transition. You want to make sure you have a nice clean line, you've analyzed your half pipe, we're bringing it all together here. Cut. Now we're adding grabs to our half pipe airs. Just like in the park, we're going to apply different variations to our front side and back side airs. The biggest mistake is deck checking. So be conscious of what grabs place your body where. Deck checking, or hanging up on the lip, occurs when you do not have enough pop back into the half pipe. First thing is your pipe might not have a lot of vert. So you need to compensate for this by using your tail a little bit more in ollieing. The second reason might be because you're not keeping your body weight in the pipe. This is a delicate balance because if you pull in too much, you're going to land in the flat. And if you don't pull in enough, you're going to land on the deck. This just takes practice. Keep practicing those airs without the grabs first and you'll get this wired. Indie airs, exact same thing as we did in the park. You're grabbing with your trailing hand between your bindings. So as soon as you leave the lip, pull your knees up into your chest and start to reach down with that trailing hand. Don't make any exaggerated body movements this time, one fluid motion. The key thing here to remember is to avoid the deck check. Keep your body in the pipe. And what I mean by this is your body stays over the transition. This will help you to avoid the deck check. <laughs> Mute airs are strictly done on your backside wall. As soon as you pop off the lip into the air, you're going to reach down with your front hand and grab your toe edge. Mute airs like indies, if you are not paying attention, you could land on the deck. So make sure that your body is back in the half pipe and you keep yourself centered. All right, backside tail grabs. You're popping off the wall. And to make this trick easier for yourself, you're going to want to push your front leg over the deck while simultaneously bringing your back leg up. Just like off of a straight jump, it makes it a lot easier to bring that board up to you than for you to reach down on the board. Pay attention that you bring your board back into the transition zone when you're coming in for the landing. If you remain extended, you're going to deck check. Stale fish on your backside wall or the fresh fish. As soon as you leave the lip, you're going to want to pull your legs up into your body, much like with the indie air, and reach with your trailing hand to your heel edge in front of your back foot. This trick is really similar to that tail grab with making sure that you bring the board up to you instead of reaching down to the board. This one is probably the most complicated of all your grabs, especially if you want to make it look really good. This trick, just like off a straight jump, is kind of a two-part trick. As soon as you leave the lip, you want to get that board up into your hand as soon as possible. As soon as you feel that board starting to reach your hand, start pushing that back leg out over the deck. Key point to remember here, make sure that you pull that back leg in before you re-entering the transition or you will, guess what, deck check. Try this one a whole bunch. 
start little. You know, you don't have to make these things look all super tweaked out at first. Just try to get your hand on it and don't try to tweak it first. Just try to grab it in the right spot and little by little start pushing it out further and further over the deck. Airs on the front side wall, grabbing in the same spot you did Indy. This is called the front side air. Now kids, don't call this one a front side Indy or you'll get yelled at by your friends at skateboard. You're popping off the lip the same way you would with that ollie. This grab is going to happen at the apex of your air. It's a totally a second thought here. So as soon as you leave the lip, pull your knees up into your chest and start to reach down with that trailing hand. Added style points on this one, you know, you can kick your tail out, you can push your nose out, you can grab around your knee, you know, stick both legs straight. It's really simple, but if you do it really big and really push it out there over the deck, it can feel really, really good. Airs, grabbing with the same hand you did on the mute air, are called front side slobs. As soon as you leave the lip, begin to twist the lower half of your body so it's facing down the hill. Simultaneously, reach down and grab with your front hand between your bindings. This one might be easier at first just to grab it quick and let go. Then, as you get more proficient and get used to the body position for this one, really start to push your back leg over the deck. Try to contort it more and more as you get better and better with this grab. <laughs> front side tail grabs. As soon as you leave the lip on a front side tail grab, start to bone that front leg. This will cause your back leg to kind of come up underneath you and it'll be that much easier for you to get your hand on your board. This one might feel a little bit awkward at first and you, you might have trouble actually getting your hand on it, but just concentrate on pushing that front leg out and bringing that back leg up at the same time. All right, stalefish on your front side wall. Coming up the wall, as soon as you pop out, make sure you rotate your lower half of your body so that it's facing down the hill. This is one of those tricks that's more body positioning than anything else. Pop off the wall, rotate your lower half of your body, and then simultaneously pull your knees up into you. At the same time as you pull your legs up into your chest, kind of push your back leg out over the deck. It makes it a lot easier when you go to reach down with that back hand in front of your back foot. It's a little bit awkward body positioning at first, but if you practice this one a few times with like just some mellow quick grabs, it'll really come to you. Same grab as the method air, but done on the front side wall. It's called a lean air. As soon as you pop off the lip, pull your knees up into you and simultaneously reach down with your front hand and grab your heel edge. This trick you can grab behind your front foot, you can grab in front of your front foot, it doesn't really matter. Just get your hand on it and start to get comfortable with just grabbing there. Then as you get more advanced, you can begin to tweak it out like you would a method air on the backside wall. You can bone your back leg out, you can push it out over the deck, you can really cross it up like you did on the straight jump. You know, sky's the limit. Okay folks, so we've had our hands all over our boards. We're like an octopus at this point. So, you know, just practice these. You can practice them off little small hips and then bring them into the half pipe. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. But the point is here is to make sure you get your front side ollies and back side ollies really dialed so that your grabs become an afterthought. So, you've got all these grabs dialed. You know, basically take them one wall at a time. You don't need to rush into this. Go maybe front side for a whole run. Do all your front side style grabs. And do, take your back side wall. Do all your back side wall style grabs. You know, just take it slow. You just want to make sure that you've got everything dialed before you start linking them together. Billy and I are going to go take a lift here, come down and do a couple complete runs, and then, you know, I'm going to pretty much call it because I'm, get, I'm getting very tired. I'm, I'm old. I'm an older style of person. Yeah, most people remember this one. So, Billy, he, I mean, I'm really not sure what he's on today, but he's got problems. Oh, God.
Okay, so we've done it. We've rocked the pipe. We've linked up our front sides and our back side. We did a front side air into an indie air. We did a lean air into a method air. We did front side tail grab, back side tail grab. We've done everything and we've put them together. We're having pipe runs. We've just gotten done having some power aid. You know, this we killed it. We killed it. Billy, do you say we killed it? I say we killed it. If you guys haven't gotten it by now, seriously, I mean, watch the video again. I mean, that's as easy as that. Just watch the video over and over and over and over again. It's the beauty of video. We got one more thing to cover, Billy. What is it? It's Apre the Richards Way. I'll see you at the pool. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Sincere thanks from myself and from Billy. You guys have the foundation now to go with this. That's what not to do, <laughs> ever. Action! All right, first thing we're gonna cover is just a little basic park etiquette. Billy, you know, he just demonstrated what will happen if you do get some pressure on your heel edge, the cobra comes up and strikes you. Strikes you, Billy. Thanks, Todd, for everything. Don't worry. You okay. should, you know, nair. All right, <laughs> easy, man. Am I, am I coming back for volume two? I don't know, man. Ow!